Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, I'm Joanna Coles, and today we're going to be visiting with Dr. Rick Besson. He's with the University of Kentucky Extension Entomologist there. Good morning, Rick. Good morning. Glad to be here. Well, I'm glad you're here because we're going to talk about every everybody's favorite topic in the morning, <laughs> but it's something that we've gotten a lot of calls about, especially this spring. People that they're kind of alarmed because they've read it in a magazine or saw it on social media that the tick population is going to be worse this year um, than ever before. So I just wanted to kind of talk today a little bit about ticks the different types and what we need to do. Yeah, and I, I think what you're reading is on the mark that, you know, the, I think the risk from ticks is gonna be very high. We, you know, I've been out in the woods and in other places and I've been seeing a lot of ticks this spring. Uh, ticks are very serious. Not only are they, they just nasty little critters that, that attach and, and uh, you know, cause those, those red welts, but they can potentially transmit a number of uh, pathogens and, and contribute to some other conditions. Absolutely. So, you know, when we talk usually about insects, we usually try to start talking about prevention. Correct. And that's probably where we need to start with ticks. Yes, v very much so. Well, and, and re really, let, let's, let's uh, back up one thing before okay. we talk about prevention. Talk about where you're likely to see ticks. Okay. And so... Uh, you know, the, probably the highest risk areas is when, when you go out into habitat where you see a lot of wildlife mm -hmm. because the, the, the ticks will be feeding on some of the, this, these other uh, wildlife animals. And so when you're in the woods, when you're in tall grass, uh, the, the, those, are, those are the places where you have the highest risk to ticks. Uh, in terms of prevention, you know, if you're planning to go out in those areas, you need to think about how you can repel and keep ticks off off your body, and so uh, you know I I still recommend when when people go in tall grass, you know tuck your pant leg down into your socks, uh, and that way if something does crawl up from your foot, they're not going to crawl underneath your pant uh, legs. They're going to crawl on the outside. Mm -hmm. When you're in those habitats, check yourself frequently for you know every every. 15, 20 minutes, you know, just check your pants, make sure you're, you're, you're not getting something crawling up that, you know, if you do see something and you're out in the woods, all you have to do is pick it up, pick it off and, 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 and flick it away. I mean, it's, it's not a big deal at that point. We do have some sprays mm -hmm. that you can put on your clothing uh, to help repel uh, the ticks. And so, you know, so, some of the, the, the uh, um, a deep containing products, some of the permethrin containing products can be applied to your clothing and they're gonna help keep those those critters off you. And so a combination of how you wear your clothing, maybe light colored clothing and the repellent should keep you protected. Correct, and you know, there's even some other things. You know, even when you're out in the woods, let's say you're at a, a state park or something like that and hiking, you know, the more you stay on the trail, mm -hmm. the less likely you're, you're gonna uh, be to pick up some of these ticks. And, and uh, so some of your behavior comes in into that as well. Because we've had homeowners call and they want to spray their entire yard that's well maintained, gets a lot of sunlight um, because either their dog or cat has ticks or maybe they found one on themselves. But usually isn't there an outlying place where they're... Yeah, you know, particularly if, if the pet is going out into some areas that are not frequently mowed, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're out there just doing what pets do and exploring, um, you know, they may be bringing in some of these from some of those outlying areas. But, you know, when, when you have your, your, your lawn and you're mowing it to, you know, two inches twice a week, uh, that's not a, a high risk area for mm -hmm. ticks. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's, it's just generally not, not one of the higher risk areas. And so if we do, if we miss all this and we do okay. happen to get a tick bite and it starts to well, I mean, is, is the thing to go and seek medical attention? Yeah, uh, it, it is, P particularly if, if you start to have any of the symptoms of, of, of some of these problems, you know, mm -hmm. you start to get the, the bullseye patterns or, or something like that, or if you have some other health issues, you definitely want to visit uh, your health care provider uh, with that. Um, the other thing is when we do go out in these areas, you go on that, that nice hike, and hopefully people do go out on nice hikes and the ticks won't keep them away, but when you get back, you really need to do a thorough check of mm -hmm. yourself for ticks because you know your hair and, and other places you know around waistbands and places where, where clothing fits uh, pretty snugly those are places where you're likely to see uh, ticks on your body 
All right, well, all good information, things that we need to be mindful about when we're out in areas where ticks might be. If you have any questions, though, make sure to contact your local extension office and we'd be happy to help. Thanks, Rick, and thanks for watching. Have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.